Hey Star Wars fans, today we continue our journey with issue 12 of the Star Wars High Republic comics by Marvel. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and go support the series by purchasing a copy of these comics. Jedi's End, Chapter 2, The Spirit of Disunity The Nile have unleashed a terrible weapon on the Jedi, a horror only glimpsed on Grizel in the aftermath of the disaster at the Republic Fair. Jedi Knights are being reduced to crumbling husks. First, Loden Greatstorm, and now the Bond twins, Tarek and Sarah of Starlight Beacon. Avar Crisp believes that Lorna D, mistakenly thought to be the Eye of the Nile, is behind the attacks and will stop at nothing to bring her to justice. However, cracks are starting to show between the Jedi, Avar increasingly at odds with her old friend, Council Member Stellan Geos. And all the time, Jedi Knight Keeve Trennis, the sole survivor of the Nile's unknown terror, wonders if she could have done more to save her friends. I've never seen Avar Chris looking so tired. It's hardly surprising, considering everything she's gone through the last few weeks, everything we've all gone through. Structural tests are continuing, Marie reports. However, I'm pleased to say that Starlight seems to have made its transfer to the Irem system without incident. Then work can begin on the relief effort, Maru? Stellan Geos asks. It has already begun, Council Member Geos, Maru answers. We should have known that towing Starlight to Dolna had only been the beginning. Now it seems that the Republic and the Jedi Council are determined to send us to the site of every natural disaster on the frontier. I understand the reasons. Irem was recently hit by a continent-wide cyclone that laid waste to the planet. After Donna, why dispatch rescue teams from Starlight when you can send the entire station? Excellent work, my friend, Stellan responds to Maru. It's why Starlight Beacon exists, to support the Outer Rim in any way possible, to make the frontier feel like a safer space. The trouble is, that seemed a lot easier a few weeks ago, before Zaius. Before Lorna D. Avar strains as she tries to hold the Nile ship from leaving the planet. We can't let her escape. Skier, Keev, help me. Skier carries Keev exhausted. Marshal, Keev is in no condition. She is a Jedi, Avar responds. The Force will provide. She strains, sweat running down her face. The Force will the Nile ship breaks away and leaves the atmosphere. No, Avar cries as she drops to the ground. How many times have I replayed that moment in my head, feeling Avar's anguish, her pain? Avar, Skira crawls. No, we should have been able to stop her. We should have been enough. Wishing I could have done more. Maru addresses the group. The good news is that the pumps at the main Iramian water purification site are already at 45% efficiency. It won't be long until... Enough, Avar cuts him off. How many times has she felt the same way? Maru looks over to Avar. Marshall? Your work coordinating the relief effort has been exemplary, Maru, but we want to know about the ataraxia. Has the path drive been attached to the ship? Avar asks. Well, yes. Jedi Manchi finished the installation this morning, Maru answers. And it's safe to use, Avar questions. Stellan chimes in over a hologram. This is the path drive that was salvaged from the Nile spacecraft destroyed at the Battle of Golov? Avar turns toward the image of Stellan. The drive that contains the locations of the main Nile base, yes. Our assault can proceed as planned. Assault? Stellan questions. Marshal Chris, must I remind you that the Council has recommended caution? Avar walks close to the hollow. And must I remind you, Stellan, that time is running out. The Nile have a weapon that can turn our people to dust. Lorna D is the key to that weapon. Avar addresses the group. According to records found in the Nile ships, the pirates operate from an area they call No Space, their base, known as the Great Hall, is a platform protected by vacuum shields and, if intel obtained on Donna can be believed, recently fortified against attack. All the more reason for prudence. 
Maybe if we used one of the ships as a scout, Stellan suggests. No, the Nile have repeatedly attacked the Jedi, Avar interrupts. You mean they've attacked the Republic, Stellan finishes. And we must be open in our response. Our failure on Zaius proved once and for all that servants of the light should never lurk in the shadows. We must be better than our enemies. We must shine. She walks away from the group. Marshal Chris, Stellan calls after her. Thank you for your counsel, Master Geos. The Ataraxia will be prepared for launch. Our failure on Zaius, Keeve looks down, blaming herself. Everyone knows who failed. Everyone knows that I should have acted instead of hiding like a coward, that I should have been better prepared. Maybe then Sarah and Tarek might still be with us, rather than trapped in a hibernation trance. Keeve bows her head as she places a hand on each of their medical beds. Hey, can you hear me in there? Either of you? I wish we could talk. I'd give anything to make sense of it. What we saw, what happened to you both. Tears begin running down her cheeks as she remembers the monster that had been unleashed. I, I should have been stronger. For you. For us. It's all such a mess now. You. Me. Avar. Keeve wipes her tears as Maru enters the medical bay from behind her. Master Maru, I... Is there any change in the Bond twins? He asks. No, she responds. They're alive, just... Lost. And they aren't the only one, Maru finishes. Jedi Trennis, Keeve. I need you to watch Marshal Chris. I fear she is allowing her emotions to govern her path. First her anger that she was kept from Valo, and now this. She is not listening to any of us. She is not listening to the Force. Keeve is caught off guard. Maru, I'm... I'm flattered you would even trust me with this, especially after everything that happened. But it shouldn't be me you're talking to. It should be Skier. Maru looks Keeve in the eyes. Maybe, but that's not possible. No. No, it's not. Keeve agrees. And we both know why. Back on Zaius, Avar ran ahead of Skier and Keeve. Chris to Ataraxia. We need to track that ship. Contact all relay stations. Find out where Dee's heading. Skier runs after her. Marshal, with all due respect, we must get the Bond twins and Keeve back to Starlight. Their injuries. Avar turns back at him, scowling. No, you don't get to advise me what to do, Skier. Not anymore. Marshal, he pleads. I gave you explicit instructions. Defensive maneuvers only. And yet, you cut through Nile fighters like a rancor that sensed blood, butchering everyone in your path. Your actions were not worthy of a Jedi. You're right. Of course you are. Skira drops his head. And I can explain. Avar cuts him off. The time for explanations has passed. Maybe I failed you, Skir. Maybe I was wrong to allow things to continue the way they are, the way you are. But for now, you've left me very little choice. Avar reaches out her hand and looks at Skir. Master Skir, your lightsaber, please. Skir places his saber in Avar's hand. Thank you, she says. You are hereby relieved of all active duties as a Jedi pending the judgment of the council. Keeve cries out, No, don't do this. Keeve, you need to rest. This isn't your fight, Skier tells her. Keeve stumbles, exhausted. She looks up at Marshal Chris. Please, Avar, whatever you think, whatever he's done, we need him. I need him. Back on Starlight, Skier meditates in his chambers. The door beeps. Skier maintains his meditative state. The door beeps again. Not now, he scowls. The door slides open and Keeve walks in. Then when, she questions him. Did you just use the force to override my door, he asks her. Yes, she responds. Proud of me? No. Liar, she chides him. You need to go, he instructs her. No, we need to talk. I need to talk, not to the person who has been hiding away in his chambers ever since we got back, with my master. A master who must do nothing before the council makes its judgment, Skier responds. Why? Keeve asks. Because Avar was right, he answers. I should have shared what was happening to me, but instead kept it a secret. I was ashamed, scared. I failed you all. Keeve looks at her master. 
Then tell me. Tell me what's happening. Why can't you trust me, Skier? Why can't you tell me what's wrong? He turns to her. Keeve. Keeve, I've never trusted anyone more. He places his hand on her shoulder. It's me I can't trust. He presses a button and a hologram appears. What's this? Keeve asks. They call it Magrak syndrome, he explains. A disease peculiar to transoceans, rare but potent. Over time, the brain gives in to its base urges, aggression, fury, rage. My mind has been subconsciously dealing with the condition, but the effort required has left you unable to connect to the force. Keith finishes for him. Is there a cure? Dr. Ginole says there are a number of possibilities, but there is a chance I may never be able to wield the force again. Skier switches off the hologram. For the sake of those around me, all my efforts must be concentrated on maintaining balance. Until then, I am a danger. Keeve is shocked. No, I can't believe that. I won't. Keeve pokes her finger into his chest. You can't give up like this. It's not giving up, Skier tells her. It is, and you know it. We strive. We repeat. We succeed. Remember that, Skier? Tears begin rolling down her cheek. Remember what you taught me? Maru wants me to keep an eye on Avar. Me. Everything I've touched over the last few months has turned into Bantha crap. That's not true, Skier says. I need you on the Ataraxia. I need you by my side, Keith cries. You must go. You have a duty. You are a Jedi, Skier instructs her. Yeah, I am. And I thought you were too. Guess I was wrong. Transmission chimes. Hub to Ataraxia. You are cleared for launch. Avar stands at the navigation controls. Thank you, Maru. Jedi Manchi, is the path drive fully integrated, she asks. Manchi responds, as far as that pirate junk can be, Marshal. That pirate junk is going to take us straight to the woman who planned the Valo atrocity and reduced our fellow Jedi to husks. Avar responds, walking off. Yes, Marshal, the engine is standing by. Keeve walks up just as Avar is leaving. Ah, Keeve, I thought for a moment you weren't going to join us. Keeve replies, wouldn't miss it for all the worlds. Avar stops and looks right at Keeve. I would understand if you wanted to sit this one out. After what happened on Zaius. I want to see this through. For Sarah and Tarek, Keeve tells her. And so do I, a voice calls from around the corner. The pair turn and look. Skier walks towards them, dressed in his Jedi robes. I know what you're going to say, Marshal, but until the Council decides my fate, I am a Jedi, and I must serve. He looks down at Keeve. If you will have me at your side. Yes, Keeve answers. Jedi Keeve, Avar sighs. I'll vouch for him, Keeve responds. I promise. And if he steps a millimeter out of line, I will gladly knock him on his scaly ass. Skier looks to Avar. She isn't joking, he says. I know, Avar responds. Everyone, take your positions, Avar instructs the crew. Hub, we are clearing the bay doors. This is it. Acknowledged, Ataraxia. May the force be with you, Maru transmits from Starlight. No going back. May the force be with us all, Avar says. Jedi Manchi, prepare to activate the path drive. On my mark. I don't know what the future holds. Avar counts down. Three, two, one. And I don't know if I'm ready. Mark, Avar finishes as the Ataraxia jumps to hyperspace. Keeve smiles, but I can't let that stop me. Join us next time to catch the next chapter in the Star Wars High Republic comics by Marvel. Please be sure to like this video and let us know in the comments if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel to follow along as we review more issues of the High Republic comics. Thanks and may the Force be with you.